very excited about what the Lord has uh, put in my heart to share with you uh, this morning. I want to talk to you about breaking out of stagnation. Uh, at a certain point in all of our lives, we find ourselves in a situation where we lose momentum. Uh, I don't know if you have ever experienced that in a graphic way, but I have in various different areas of my life. You can be doing really, really well, and then all of a sudden, you lose your momentum. And getting momentum back can be expensive. Getting momentum back can, can be hard. It's like, have you ever broken down in your car and suddenly you, you uh, don't have the power of that engine anymore uh, that you were kind of just taking for granted? Now you have to put your shoulder to the boot of your car and push it. And the, the, it's very difficult in the beginning, isn't that right, to get that momentum back. But once you've got it back, it's quite easy if you're on a flat surface to be able to keep the car rolling. And some of you today, right now in your life, have lost the momentum in key areas. Maybe as a professional, maybe as a husband or a wife, maybe in the area of your finances, maybe in your relationship with God. Momentum has been lost and you find yourself static, stationary, in one place, not moving, fixed. Some of you may have been there a week. Some of them, maybe you've been there a month. For others, you may have been there a year or years. There's no time limit, you know, on being static or on being stagnant. But I want to give you some good news this morning. You don't have to stay where you are. Hallelujah. You can move out of where you are by the grace of God. You know, in nautical terms, uh, there's... Um, uh, a term called the doldrums. The doldrums is a, it would be a time under uh, uh, ships that sailed by the power of the wind. Um, they would get to certain places in their journey, certain places in the ocean where the wind would die down completely, their sails would become limp, and the boat or the ship would become stationary. And uh, it could go on for weeks. Where the, where the ship would just stand still um, because that ship is dependent upon external forces to move it toward its destination. And some of us as people have fallen for the same, if you would, lie that we, our momentum, our forward movement is determined upon external forces. Your moving toward your destiny is not dependent upon somebody else's response. It's not dependent upon whether the wind blows or doesn't blow. It's not dependent upon whether, whether somebody else can see you. It is the, your, your momentum is your responsibility. It is not anybody else's responsibility. And so you may have lost your momentum. You may be in life, I've, you speak to people, maybe you're one of these people, or maybe you know somebody like this. When you ask them, how are you doing? They say, well, I can't complain. <laughs> under the circumstances, you know, what are you doing under there? <laughs> Considering my situation, I'm doing okay. Well, how many of you believe in God for more than that? Yeah. Right? Well, the life that God's called us to is a much more life. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You know, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's not God's plan for your life. That's the devil's plan for your life. God's plan for your life is that you move forward from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Amen? He doesn't want us to stay static and stationary. You know what? The, the, the reason why you... Let me maybe convince a few more folk here because you need a little bit more convincing because you've lived a victim so long in your life that you've got the lines down. You've got all the excuses and the reasons down pat. When somebody asks you anything, you always think about the reason why you can't. Yeah. 
The reason why you won't is because of my family. It's because of my money. If I had the money you have, I wouldn't be in the place where I'm at. Ho, oh, be careful. Because you are where you are. And as soon as you own where you are, you're beginning the process of being able to move out from that place. And so when I think about um, blaming others or looking at the unchangeables in your life, you know what you're actually doing? You're like the ship, you're like the sailor, relying on the external force to move you forward. As Christians, we have an internal force to move us forward. It's called the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, hallelujah, lives inside of you and me. Everything that we need for life and for godliness, we already have. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation. All right? You, my friend, have everything you need in order to move from stagnation to momentum. Some of you I'm yet to convince. Hallelujah. I can see that hard look on your face. And that face that says, you don't know what I know. You haven't been where I've been. You don't got the problems I got. You're the pastor with the microphone. (laughs) Yeah, I got the mic. No, the thing is, is that we are all, hallelujah, accountable to God for where we are. You know, whatever hand you were dealt, whether you're a rags to riches story, hallelujah, if you're the guttermost to the uttermost story, hey, the bigger the challenge, God gets even more glory, okay? So you're, you're, a, you're a life that's about to be a massive mirror to reflect the glory of God as you move from your place of desperation, your place of stagnation, to a place of momentum, a place of growth, a place of life, a place where you're flourishing, a place of abundance. Can I hear an amen? That testimony is a greater testimony than the guy who got it all in the beginning. When I think about this, this whole stagnation thing, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. It's a real thing in your career. You killed it last year, but this year you're not killing it. Where your marriage was great, you know, a few months ago, but right now it's not great. Do you know that when you don't understand the secret to your success and you accidentally succeed... When you all of a sudden aren't doing the things that made you succeed and now you start to fail, you won't know how to fix it because you never made it in the first place. You fell into it. And God doesn't want you to be like that. He wants you to understand what it takes to move from where you are to the place He wants you to be and to own it and take responsibility for it. Can I hear a great holler and a shout in the house? Amen. We live in a generation that is entitled. We live in a generation that wants to blame ship. We live in a generation where everybody else is the problem. Everyone else, they're the reason why. I tell you what, if we start looking to ourselves and understanding that there's great grace to be a better version of ourselves because we're to become more like Christ, we would be transformative. Oh, city of Joburg, watch out. We'd be a different city. Let me not get off on that tangent. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Remember, we're talking about breaking out of stagnation. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as his inheritance. And he went out, this is crazy, and he went out not knowing where he was going. So he was in a place that was stagnant. He was in a place that was familiar. He was in the place he was always in, the place where he was born around the things he's always known. And God now says, I have an inheritance. 
I have something for you. I have a land. I have a destiny. I have a destination. I have a place I want you to be. And in order to go and get it, you're going to have to move from passivity to activity. Not because you have the full story, but because God has revealed something to you. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 says, And now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. You see, when we start to feel like we need the full story in order to move forward, we're immediately sabotaging ourselves to stay right where we are. God will never give you the full picture. He'll never tell you the whole story. He'll never give you something else to put your faith in. You see, if God showed you everything you needed to see, your faith would not be in God. It would be in what you see. Your faith would be in the plan, not in the planner. Your faith would be in what God had revealed rather than in God himself. So breaking out of stagnation, first main thought here is, in order to do that, you've got to spend time with God to get a word from God. If you have a word from God, nothing will be impossible for you. A person with a word from God is a dangerous person. A person with a word from God is willing to do without in order to get where they have to go. They're willing to say no to a lot of stuff so say they can say yes to that word. When you have a word of God and you know that you know that you know, it doesn't matter what comes your way. It doesn't matter who says no. It doesn't matter who wags their finger in your face and says, "Uh uh-uh. You're able to say, I know that I know that God has said it to me. Therefore, I will not stop. I will not give up. No matter what comes at me, no matter how hard the wind blows, no matter how difficult, no matter how steep the road is ahead of me, I am going to keep on going because I have a word from God. If you've lost your momentum, you either don't have a word from God or you've forgotten the word from God. You need to come back to the beginning place. You need to come back and allow the Lord to breathe the spirit, the pneumos over the dead thing and let it come to life again. And that only happens when you get with God. When you get with God, God can take the thing, the word that has been dead and dormant and bring it to life. One man sows, another man waters, but it's God who brings forth the increase. You can't make it increase, but you can water it. Hallelujah. You can sow it, but God will do his part and will increase it in due season at the right time. Spend time with God and get a word from God. Jeremiah 32 verse 2 it says, thus says the Lord who made it. Come and say, who made me. That's right, God made you. And it goes on to say, and the Lord who formed it, God formed you, hallelujah, to establish it, and God is establishing you. God wants to do what? He wants to do, he wants to, you to understand that he's made you. He's fashioned you or formed you intentionally. And he's also going to establish you. And then it goes on to say, call to me, and I will answer you and show you, Woo! and show you. Come on, not just anything, but I'm going to show you great and mighty things that you currently don't even know about. So you want to see from God, you want to 
hear from God, you want a word from God, God will show you something so awesome, so mighty, that you will have a weightiness and an authority to move from where you are, from your father's house, from your familiar, from your known into your unknown, because the word of God has convinced you that you know, that you know, that you know, and you will move from passive believing into active faith. You see, that's the thing. Eventually, you're going to have to act on the word that God gave you. Because faith without works is dead. I hear so many times people saying, but I can't. I don't have this and I don't have that. Oh, my friend, God has given you everything that you need right now. And if you can't see it, then ask the Lord to open your eyes so you can begin to see what you've got. So you can move forward. You see, I believe nothing will be impossible to you if you have a word from God. That's all you need. That's all you need. A word from God. Second thought is here, move in a direction and trust God to guide you as you go. This is how we move from, uh, from stagnancy to, to a place of momentum. You've got to do what? You've got to move in a direction and trust God to guide you as you go. It doesn't mean you know all the details of where you're going, but you're going to start acting and doing something practical about what you have had revealed to you by the Lord. It's going to move from prayer, 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 believe, 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 talk, 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 to do, do, do. I remember as an 18-year-old young man, the Lord put it on my heart that I was supposed to be equipped to plant a church and, and to be uh, uh, enabled as a pastor, as a leader. And I knew that where I was, I wasn't going to be able to get it in a small town in Zimbabwe they, uh, where I grew up. God revealed himself to me. I spent time with the Lord, and the Lord spoke to me this scripture here in Hebrews uh, uh, I beg your pardon, Genesis, where it says, And now the Lord said to James, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land I will show you. And I was like, Lord, where do I go? He said, You choose anywhere, my boy, anywhere you want to go. And as you step out, I will direct your foot to where it's supposed to go. And that's exactly how God works. You step and God will place your righteous foot in the path it's supposed to go. He's not going to let you end up in the wrong place. As you go, the Lord will direct your steps. See, He directs our steps. And so you'll find in Psalms 37, the steps of a good and righteous man how many, how many righteous people do we have here this morning? Come on. If you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, come on, wave at heaven. Acknowledge your spiritual identity this morning. Come on, say, I am righteous. That's right. So you qualify for the scripture. The steps of a righteous man are directed and established by the Lord. And he delights in his way and blesses his path. The Lord delights in you because you're in Christ. He, all the promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Jesus is going to help you by His Spirit to not miss the mark when it comes to your high calling. You will accomplish your purpose when you start to move from only knowing to doing. You have to act. It's going to be a risk. You're going to have to take a risk. I'm sorry to bring the bad news. You will feel afraid. Your mind will tell you not to do it. Your friends will tell you not to do it. Your boss will tell you not to do it. Your own emotions will say, you can't do this. But the Lord, hallelujah, wants you to ignore those things and do what he's telling you to do. It'll never be right. It'll never feel like the timing is right. Do you know what? It's never a good time to have children. They're expensive. And every single woman knows it's painful. 
It's never a good time. There's never enough money. It's never just. Let me tell you that it'll never be right for you to step out. But you have to step out and start. That is the catalytic moment. That is the moment, hallelujah, where what you believe and what you've been told come together and there's ignition of faith and God begins to move and things begin to happen and your life moves from, a, from dormant to powerful, from passive to active. It's doing. You have to step out. This is not about reading your Bible and praying. This is about taking what happened when you read your Bible and when you prayed out of the place of the prayer closet and into the street in Jesus' name, where you, in the lives of other people, step out and God will take you by the foot and He will plant your foot exactly where it's supposed to go. I stepped out and I was stepping to America, very scared. Lord, and the Lord redirected my foot in a moment and took me to the UK. It was beyond my control. Every door to the States was shut and then one door opened and I was asked to please come to the UK. And I had to go to the UK before I could get to the States, before I could meet my wife. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, God, God's smarter than you. And he knows that in order to get you here, you first have to go here. It will not make sense to you. But you're going to meet some people here that you need before you can move over here. But God's not going to show you that because then your faith will be toward the people you're going to meet there in order to move here rather than your faith being here and being led by faith because we don't walk by sight. Come on, I'm preaching now. So we've got to move in a direction and trust God to guide us as we go. I believe that God directs a moving ship. If you're sitting in a, in a little boat, you've got, you got the sail down, not up, and you, you've got your rudder. No matter how much you turn your rudder, you're not going in any direction until you raise your sail. God wants you to raise your sail and start to move in a direction. And only when you're moving in a direction will He then begin to direct you. You can be going in the wrong direction. As long as you're going in a direction, God will redirect you. It's like sitting in your car. You can sit in the garage all day long and play with the steering wheel. But until that car is moving, it's not going to change direction. The same is with your life. You have to move forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, some of the saddest stories are people with big testimonies that are still living in that testimony and have stopped living today. Some of your greatest things to overcome are past successes. Because you want to live back there. And you want to remember that moment. And nobody ever succeeded running forward by looking backwards. You can glance back for encouragement, but keep your eyes forward. Because God's calling you to even greater things. Even greater things. Third thought here, last thought. We've got to give God something to work with. Every single time I see God move in the life of an individual and take them from dormancy and stagnation and static position to forward momentum and great influence or fruitfulness into their inheritance and destiny. I tell you what he's done. He always makes sure that there's something that happens in that individual's life. It's an awakening moment where they suddenly realize what's in the box. You're like, what do you mean in the box? What box? 
You know, you people always say, think out of the box. God doesn't want you to think out of the box. God wants you in this situation to think in the box. What do I already have in my life that God wants to use now in order for me to break into forward momentum? God isn't going to bring something to get you forward momentum. God's already given you what you need to get the forward momentum. Take Moses. Moses has been called by God. But Moses takes matters into his own hands. And he kills an Egyptian. And people witness it. Then he tries to lead the people that he just did that in front of. And they weren't having any of it. So he felt the rejection of the people he was supposed to lead early, earlier on in his life. He runs away to, to Midian on the backside of the wilderness. And what does he do there? He works for his father-in-law for 40 years. Come on, say 40 is a long time. 40 is a long time. He is 40 years doing the same thing, taking care of his father's sheep. Same thing. He is static. He's static. He's static. He's stationary. He's stagnant. And then in a moment, what does the Lord do? He reveals himself in a burning bush. Point one, he goes and he meets with God. He gets with God. And when he gets with God, he gets a word from God. And then what does God do in order to get him from having just a word from God to moving in God and having faith and taking a step and risking it all? He was risking it all to have to go back to, into Egypt because he was a murderer. Back to Egypt you will go. And he complains and he says to the Lord, but, but what if the people say, the Lord has not appeared to you? Who are you? And think that he's lying. And then the Lord looks at Moses and he says to Moses, what is that in your hand? What is already in your hand, Moses? When he looks to his own disqualification, when he looks to his own lack, when he looks to his own inability, what does God say? What's already in you? What have you already got? Do you think God didn't know what was in Moses' hand? No, God knew. God's all-knowing. But Moses didn't know what Moses had in Moses' hand. And sometimes we need to spend time with God so that we can begin to see what He's already put in our lives that He wants to use for His glory that's going to move you from stationary to, hallelujah, massive momentum. Are you ready to ask the Lord to show you what's already there? You see, Moses leaned on that rod for 40 years he never thought any life could come up that thing was disconnected from its source of life for 40 years it was a dead thing some of you have looked at the things in your life you said but god could never use that it's a dead thing you won't even consider it because it's so familiar just like the woman who was about to eat her last meal and die what did she do she was interrupted by a man who brought the presence of God with him. And instead of eating her last meal, she had to take what was so insignificant in her hand and sow that seed in the midst of her knee because that's what was in her hand. And that's what brought forward momentum in a time of famine. You can be in famine, surrounded by people in famine, surrounded by people who are going nowhere, surrounded by poverty, surrounded by need, surrounded by desperation. Yet you, because of your relationship with God, can have a word in season and He can show you what He's going to do with your life and He can show you how He's going to do it for that one step and everything will change in a moment, in an instant, because you took a step, you took a risk, you took it out of the realm of possibility into the realm of reality. You took it out of, I'm trusting God, to God, I'm acting on this. Come on, let's stand this morning. I believe that's a word in season for so many of you. And I don't want this to be a word like, you've just come to church, you're going to go. Somebody's going to say, oh, how was church? you say, oh, oh, pastor was on fire. It was awesome. Say, so what was it about? What was it about? I don't know, it's good. 
It's good. I'm encouraged. Can you share with me? Listen to the tape. Listen to the CD. You'll get it. The thing is, is that you've forgotten. For some of you, this is a milestone word. It's a cricket bat to the side of the head word to say, hey, stop what you're doing. Wake up and do what God's telling you to do. And what you've been praying for for years can happen in a moment. Are you ready to take it seriously and do what needs to be done? Come on, wave at heaven. Come on, acknowledge it. All right. You're ready to pray. Come on, put your hand on your heart because there's a heart issue. Pray this with me, Jesus. Thank you for a word in season. This is a word for me. Customized. Customized for me. I receive it by faith. And I choose by your grace and through the power of your Holy Spirit to act upon it. Lord, give me a word. Give me a word. Help me to move forward. Give me a word. Show me what's in my hand. Give me a glimpse. That's all I need is a glimpse. Not the whole plan. Just a glimpse. Just a sneak peek. And I'll go. I'll do it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some thanks. Amen. Woo! Man, I'm so glad. I am so glad you came today. Some of you got here by the skin of your teeth. There was a fight in the car. You almost didn't get that ride somebody promised you. You almost didn't wake up, but you're here today. And God has given you something of value to take out of this place and apply to your life in Jesus' name. Very quickly, while you just bow your head and close your eyes, I want to ask a question. Are you right with God today? Are you a child of God? Do you know that you are forgiven? If you were to die right now, are you certain you would go to heaven? Do you know that you know that you know you're a child of God? that all your sins have been washed away. Come on, if you're in a place of questioning and doubt, you're uncertain, that means you need to get right with God, my friend. If that's you this morning and you're saying, Pastor, I know that I need to get right with God. I don't want to wait another minute, another hour. I don't want to wait another, for another opportunity. Today is my day. I need to get right with God right now. If that's you, I want to ask you to raise your hand right now if that's you. I see your hand at the back. God bless you. Anyone else? Say, Pastor. Ma'am, I see your hand right there. God bless you. Anyone else? Say, Pastor, I, wanna, I want you to pray for me. I need to get right with God. Ma'am, I see your hand over there. God bless you. Anyone else? I'll wait just a bit longer. Anyone else? Hallelujah. You've raised your hands. Actually, you three people. Ma'am over there in the maroon top, lady in the yellow, and that other person at the back. I want you to come to the front right now. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. You're going to encounter God, and you are going to be changed from the inside out. Come on, let's thank God. There's one more to come. I saw you back there. Don't be scared. There you go. There you go. God bless you. Awesome. Awesome. Praise God. Please extend your hands to these who came forward. Pray right now. Jesus. Say this with me, Jesus, today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for cleansing me and washing me from all my sin, past, present, and future. Thank you, Lord, that I'm now a child of God. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me. I am born again, and my name is written in the book of life. By your grace, I'll serve you. I'll follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on, shout an amen.